Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is The Ramble. We go until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the smoky orange skies of uh, San Francisco, California, we go to talk to Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, cough for us, Larry. Hello, Alex. (laughs) <laughs> we, uh, I think the last time I talked to you, we were talking about the fires out here, and uh, they yeah. haven't gotten any better. Yeah. And this last week was the weirdest day of my life. I, uh, they've been painting the building. Yeah. So I hear the painters outside, and I look up. It's pitch dark, and I look up. It's almost 10 in the morning. <laughs> So then I go out at noon, and it's, it's as dark as midnight. There was that much smoke, and then fog, fog had come in on top of that. So it was literally like midnight at noon. Oh, Jesus. That's, it was it's uh, very eerie. It sounds very eerie. Uh, I see pictures of San Francisco, and I see the Palace of Fine Arts. And, of course, it's orange to begin with, but everything yeah. around it is orange, too, you know. It's got to be, got to be weird, got to be very weird. Well, maybe it's the end of the world. It is. I think. I think this. It, we are just about uh, ten ticks away from the apocalypse. Uh, <laughs> really, I I'm, never, never thought we'd be the last generation. Y- yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it it just gets worse and worse. I mean, anybody who says this has nothing to do with global warming is Trump. Okay, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely a result of global warming. It's definitely um, a, a, you know, you can, you can talk about, gl- there's a big giant glacier uh, that's falling into the ocean. They, they say when it breaks off, and it could be any day now, the seas will rise 14 inches or something like that. All right? That would that, be a lot. That, if you don't want to talk about global warming causing that, Okay, how what? How do you account for all these fires? You know, I mean, this is not a natural occurrence. Yes, we do get a certain amount of fires. There's no question about that. It's part of nature. Mm-hmm. But you know, this much, this bad. Well, they are bad. Although they have found a couple of people actually said a few of these. So uh, I don't know. Well, they had that uh, gender reveal party. Yeah, that was a brilliant move. <laughs> and I, quite frankly, the way things are going today, I wouldn't hold a gender reveal party for about maybe 21 years. <laughs> because, uh, you know, some people don't reveal their gender till they're that age, so. <laughs> That's uh... <laughs> I think we could, we're old enough, we could almost throw in a Christine Jorgensen reference. Yeah, that's, <laughs> nobody remembers Christine Jorgensen. Stop it. My, I just remember my parents talking to me about that like in 1960, so. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder. You, you probably know about that. What? J- Christine Jorgensen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Christine Jorgensen was a big story because Christine Jorgensen who, by the way, turned out to be a very dignified person. I mean, uh, amazing when you would see her talking publicly, how, how much poise she had and so on, was the first uh, at least acknowledged sex change in the United States. Uh, went to, I think it was Sweden or someplace like that, to get the operation. And then, of course, uh, with it came the plethora of Christine Jorgensen jokes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this would have been maybe in the early 50s? Yeah. Now, today, Christine Jorgensen wouldn't even be a, be a story. No, but that must have been trailblazing back then. Oh, it was. Were you alive at that time? I was alive, but I was like, at like you know, two years old. So yeah, my, uh, yeah. I just remember my, my parents talking about it. This is probably 10 years later. Yeah. 
it was still kind of a big news thing whenever that name came up. Well, I mean, I, I would imagine that more people would have done it if it were available. I mean, today it's available, all right? You know, um, and it's available here in this country. You don't have to travel to Sweden to go get it done. Jesus. But, uh, well, you, huh? I've talked to someone that, uh, a transgender uh, person, and they, they told me, she said that they're actually people, they, they, they say, you got to make you got to know for sure if you want that operation because people have done it and then kind of regretted it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember we, we used to have a woman on our program or trans on our show who had had a sex change. And when I asked her why, she said, because I like having sex with women. I said, well, wait a minute. You cut off your penis, and now you want to have sex with women. She says, yeah, now I'm a lesbian. <laughs> I, I went, geez, that's, you know, you're really going far to try and be a lesbian, you know? <laughs> I mean, still hot for women, but had the penis cut off. I mean, I, I, I would like to understand every inch of this, but I'm, I'm, that's a bad choice <laughs> of terms. I would like to uh, uh, understand every inch of this thinking but i can't because i'm straight you know and i don't completely understand why you would cut off your penis so you could have sex with women i i just you know it doesn't make sense yeah i've me. heard of this it's happened to other people a yeah. very nice person big uh, very i used to have her on the show uh, frequently oddly enough and um uh she ta spoke her cause very well but I just, I said, I just don't understand it, you know. So now you're a lesbian. And she said, yeah. I, it didn't make sense to me. And I'm a, you know, you know me, I'm a very far-thinking guy about this. Hey, you want to have, you know, you, you're gay? Fine, go ahead, just as long as you have some sexuality and can enjoy yourself. So I've never had any issue with the sexuality of people. Um transgender i kind of have a little bit of a problem with because it it's it it's, it's something that uh i understand when people want to accommodate for it and they want to start wearing women's clothing and live as a woman uh but a lot of them don't go out and get gender uh reassignment as a result of that um so anyway i'm just i'm befuddled all right, I'm an old Yeah, well, you're always person. ahead of the curve. But, yeah, uh, I mean, I understand. Go do it if you want to. I, you know, and I'm not going to tell you tell you not to. But, you know, when you get your penis cut off, that's pretty much a permanent decision. That's a permanent. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think. Uh, I wonder what it's like going from a woman to a man. Uh, to me, that seems like it'd be a much harder operation. Well, uh, uh, yes, it is. It is a harder operation, and with that brings up uh, Chastity Bono, uh, who you may remember was a little girl on the Sonny and Cher shows, but now is a guy with a beard, and you know, uh, yes. yeah. But but when asked, uh, have you had your have, have you had your uh, your penis uh, uh, penis added you know added to you? Which, by the way. Uh, is uh, technically known as an adedictomy. <laughs> um, have, ha have you done that? Uh, he said, uh, or he said, because yeah, he's a he now, he said no. He said, because I, I feel that I'm not ready for that. You know, I want to live as a woman, as a man, but I don't want to, gen you know, gender-wise or penis-wise or whatever, be, be a guy. So how could, they, how could they make one? That's what I can't understand. I've, I've heard some, some of it, and I forgot it all. You know, um, you know. Um, to begin with, I don't know why anybody would want a penis. Okay, that's my first argument because God knows I've had enough trouble with mine. <laughs> okay, very, of course ours are very cumbersome. Our lives have been completely dictated by this divining rod between our legs. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the male sex drive is the, uh, just, it's a curse. It's, it's a curse. It's natural. You know, I mean, what I hate about a lot of the Me Too stuff is, 
you know, you've got to give a certain uh, amount of uh, credibility to biological imperative. You know, the fact that guys are horny and they come on to women, well, I mean, they get horny and they come on to women. Now, it, it's a matter of how you come on to women that's the question. If you do it in an untoward manner, that's not right. But if you do it in a decent manner and you're not, you know, you, you, hey, you, you put the make on somebody and if she says no, you say, okay, well, I don't blame me for trying. But mm -hmm. now you're just beginning blame for trying. Yeah. Then, and I think that's going against natural instinct because our basic drive, to be honest with you, if we, if we take away all the other aspects of life, our drive is to inseminate the herd. It is. Yeah. So how many herds have you inseminated? <laughs> Not enough. And no, no. We, uh, it just when you just think about uh, chasing women, how, how many bad decisions and things we've done in our life. <laughs> oh, how in you, that pursuit? How humiliating do we allow ourselves to be? Oh yeah, striking out and looking like an idiot. Yeah, and also, I mean, just the things we will put up with to get laid. I mean, you'll go out on a date, and you will be with this absolutely stupid, moronic woman who hasn't got a brain in her head. <laughs> pretending she's interesting. And you're <laughs> pretending she's interesting. Uh, you know, the one thing, if anything, that these prostate seeds have given me is because it's taken away a lot of my sex drive, it's given me back my dignity. <laughs> because men know what it's like to have no dignity because of that, that monster between your legs. Yeah. You know? It dictates a lot of what we do in life. So, you know, I say to the Me Too movement, you know, go a little easier on us. Uh, you know, when we act in a way that is terrible towards another human being, we should be assailed for that. But when we're simply assailed for coming on to somebody, you know, and or testing the waters to see if there's any possibility there. Uh, yeah, they should treat that as a disability. Yeah. Don't 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 get mad at us, you know. I mean, I was mentioning the other day, uh, uh, what's his name, Louis C.K., uh, who I think is a perfect gentleman, because before he pulled his penis out, he asked if anybody would me. mind, <laughs> you know. And some I, guys just pull it out. Yeah, some guys just pull it out. He asked for permission, and nobody said no, so he pulled it out, and they sat there and watched. So how, what did he do that was wrong? You know, outside of the fact that, you know, I, I wouldn't pull my penis out in front of a, anybody, you know, unless it was in private. You know, but, uh, yeah. but and he, it, since then, he hasn't been able to work because of that. Yeah, and I just, I started watching uh, Parks and Rec. And he, he was in some of the early episodes. He was really funny. Oh, he was great. His TV show. Louis C.K. show was Louis was terrific, mm -hmm. and then he produced a lot of other shows. Uh, uh, Better Things uh, was another show he produced, and that thing with the who, who was it with the uh, Louis uh, Anderson? Uh, um, oh God, I can't remember the name of the show. And somebody I know what he, he produced that. Yeah, he produced that. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, he, he was he was a major producer in the business. And then at the time this all happened, he had a movie coming out, and they immediately pulled it from release, uh, a movie he had written and directed. So it wasn't a very good movie, by the way. But That's what I've heard, but do, do, will he ever come back? No. I, you know, not at this rate. No, not, he, in this it, not in this climate. Not in Not in this climate, no, not at all. So, you know, but uh, that's, that's the nature of us. And yes, even even Bubbles is a horny person. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. It'd be great not to. Our penises are like uh, in Doctor Strange. I remember when he was fighting his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Yes, it's <laughs> got its own mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I I just uh, I'm 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 amazed. Okay, that we live in this time where. Especially for you as a comic, I, mean, I was talking to Bobby Slayton about this the other day. Just this whole political correctness—it's ruined him. He can't do oh, his I act. Oh, I think so. Yeah. He can't do his act anywhere. You know, 
What, he's going to do the Chinese routines? Uh-uh. He's going to do the uh, thing about women? Uh-uh. So he just said, I've retired. I'm out of here. You know, I'll do my little... Uh, uh, Someone they... told me that. He's actually given up? Yeah, yeah. And he's just doing Skechers commercials, which is bringing in the money. So, you know, that's it. But the... Uh... Possibly the greatest club comic in America. Uh, no question about it. And I told him what was terrible about it was, uh, you know, he plays an instrument beautifully. And to think that his virtuosity will never be used is ridiculous. I said, get back out there. Just do something. You're one of the funniest human beings on the planet. There's well, got to be an audience he can still play to. Yeah, yeah. And, and nobody's ever accused him of anything, except that, of course, uh, he used to stay at Jeffrey Epstein's place when he was in New York. But oh, yeah. that's not, that didn't look good in the resume. Yeah, when he called, <laughs> when Jeffrey Epstein got arrested, I didn't know that's where he was staying all the time. But he always told me he had this friend that he was staying with and who put him up in New York. And um, he called me up and he said, Well, there goes my place in New York. And I went, What? <laughs> he says, Yeah. I, Jeffrey Epstein put me up in this apartment he owned, you know, whenever I came to New York, because he was a fan. And I went, oh, boy. He said, did you realize any of this was going on? He says, not a clue. Not a clue. So, whatever. Yeah. hey, listen, we've run out of time. What, what an interesting, enlightening conversation we had about penises. We touched many bases today. Including, including our own. Uh <laughs> Anyway, I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, Larry. You or I'll talk to you next. Well, I'll talk to you. Well, uh, for r r broadcast purposes, we'll talk to you next week. But we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Anyway, ladies okay. and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles. Yes, he's the brown. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ta-da! Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is our uh, little program as we uh, we uh, we launch into yet another of our uh, our programs of, of complete uh, uh, frustration. You know, I don't know why I do this. Nobody listens to this. Nobody cares about this. Nobody wants to listen to an old guy rant and rave with his communist Chinese hat on. I was watching some documentary. Fan fascinating. If you get a chance, let me turn on the air conditioning again. Uh, I turned it off because I didn't want it. it. It is getting cooler, but this room needs the air conditioning uh, to uh, for us to exist. Uh, mainly because it gets so hot in here. Anyway, um, uh, I uh, was uh, um, uh, watching a documentary on a guy who went to China in the 19, uh, uh, what was it, 19, late 1940s, and uh, hooked up with Mao, and is an, was an American, and became the only American to be a member of the, uh, uh, of the Communist Party in, uh, in China. And he t just told a story about his whole experiences there and the experiences of seeing all the changes that went down in China. And that so got to me that I went and watched another documentary on the history of China. And uh, so everything you want to, uh, anything you want to ask me about China, I'll be happy to answer for you. But let me, let me go to our uh, citizen panel who are joining us slowly but surely on our, um, on our Zoom and what you do, folks, if you want to be part of that, just go to my uh, my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash A Bennett, or go over to gabnet.net. Both of those have a link to the Zoom panel. You just click on that, and whether you've got Zoom installed in your machine or not, it'll ask you if you want to, but if you don't have it, it'll still let you come on here, and uh, you can join us like these fine folks who are joining us. Hello, to Brian Neary. What's that? You know who that is? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, Bono. That's, uh, yeah, Chaz Bono. He lost like 85 pounds. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He's a good looking guy. Maybe, maybe they <laughs> used some filter. Yeah. Maybe they used a little filter too, but yeah, he, he lost a lot of weight. He's guess, a good looking so. guy there. I, uh, you know. Um, Hang out, hang out with the guys. God yeah. knows we have enough competition without having some woman decide that she's going to regenderize. 
and become uh, make us all look bad. <laughs> Hi there, Charlie Wallace. How are you this evening? Yeah. Jeffrey Stein, glad to see you join us. And uh, Robert Natali's here already. How you, how was your weekend, everybody? Anybody do anything interesting? No. no. Well, okay, thank you, and good night. Because uh, <laughs> I got nothing to talk. I got I haven't got that much to talk about. Uh um, again, I'm tired as usual. I've been uh, having to take the. Do, do anybody ever take these non drowsy antihistamines? You know, these things that say they're non drowsy? I got news for you. About five o'clock every day, I pass out. <laughs> you know, now I'm drowsy my ass. Okay? But uh, anyway, so no, we didn't, uh, we didn't do anything this weekend. And I don't know if I'm going out ever again. They now say. That get ready, there's going to be another wave in New York City. Uh, a wave of what? Of coronavirus. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And, and, and what happened, and the reason for it is uh, that they're, they're, the thing that launched the fear about it is there was a case at, uh, because a lot of companies are starting to let people come back to work. Yeah. Okay, and, and doing social distancing and, uh, you know, testing and things like that, right? Uh, over J.P. Morgan Chase, somebody came down with COVID. And now they're telling everybody, go home, forget it, we were wrong. Uh, and they say this is maybe the beginning of it. And today's numbers are not good. We had 11 deaths. We only had about 700, and f was 640 uh uh, people um, uh, were hospitalized, but we had, uh, we've never gone over 1%. We've been under 1% for like a month and two, a month and a week, maybe a little more than that here in New York City, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do about 75,000 tests a day. Well, we hit 1%. So, you know, I, I, it, it, I'm not feeling comfortable with what's going on out there. And I've been a little loosey-goosey about, hey, okay, I'll go out to the store and I will go up to the supermarket mm -hmm. and I will do this and I will do that. I'm, I'm, I think I'm back to staying indoors again. You know? When did they start letting people in 25% of the restaurants? Is that last week? And they haven't done that yet. They're supposed to start at the end of the month. But at the rate this Started is going... Here. Huh? What, what it you, started here. It started there? In, yeah. in Jersey, yeah. And how did it go for you people there? A uh, little bit of a spike, actually. Yeah, see? We can't, until we've got a, uh, what do you call it, a, you know, a I vaccine, seen. there's nothing we can, uh, nothing we're going to be able to do about it. We're just going to have to, like, stay indoors, and we're going to have to wear our masks, mm -hmm. you know. And I get so mad when I see people not wearing masks. It just irritates the hell out of me. You know? Trump and just I, said again. Hmm? He just said again the virus is going to go away. Did he Did really? you see that, Robert, today? Yes, I did. And he said it's going to go away. And they said, oh, well, he said, well, yeah, eventually. And we're all, oh, like, yeah. Well, yeah, no shit. Yeah, we're all going to die eventually. Oh, shit. Yeah, eventually when there's one person left on the earth, and that, of course, we know will be Charlton Heston. Uh, uh, hey, Brian, the other good news for you is he said it's going to cool down. So, yeah, <laughs> you guys we're, got no trouble. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to rake the 33 million yeah. acres of forest yeah. and we'll be fine. Yeah. Get the rakes yeah. out. <laughs> it's going to cool down. You'll see. Yeah. Well, they They're already cooled down today. I love it how he is Mr. Science. I, I yeah. really love how yeah. he really is. Mr. Wizard. Yeah. Oh, man. And excuse me, I've got my allergies again. I don't know what the allergies are from because there's no pollen right now, but I don't know. So anyway, it, it, yeah, it, we got an idiot for a president. Uh, and, um, man, I'm hoping against hope that he is not president much longer. Um, still yeah. looking for the heart attack. Yeah, yes, John. Yeah, I had this this weird feeling this weekend, and I was thinking, you know, if somebody if somebody assassinated Hitler, and we never had the Second World War, and there was never a Holocaust, yeah, 
that person that assassinated him would have gone down in history as a terrorist. We would never have known that he, you know, that he was, you know, uh, really saved six million lives and everything. But, what, what, but yeah, yeah. so that and what, what what that has to do with Trump is, yeah. If I if I feel if I pray or whatever, I say I hope you get COVID and fucking die. Would is that is that something wrong with that? I mean. You know, you know what I mean? I well, mean, I, I don't think do I don't that. think it's a law against wishing somebody dead. No, I know, but is um, it morally wrong to, for someone? Well, like that? of course it's moral. It's morally. Well, how many uh, people has Trump killed? Two hundred thousand. Uh, you know, of course it's morally wrong, but so is Donald Trump. Is, you know, yeah, I wouldn't so, turn you in, I, and I wouldn't <laughs> turn you in either. Well, you know what? Uh, I have an alternative here to what we could do, and that is there's a theory that if you took a person put him in the center of a football field, then had 100,000 people in that stadium all at one time wish him dead, that he would maybe he would die. <laughs> so we have, you should have a day of uh, wishing death upon our esteemed leader. Uh, you know, but then we, get, then we get Pence. What kind of misery would that be? Uh, you know? I, bad. I, I, Couldn't listen, be worse. I think Pence is, is Trump's insurance against assassination. To be honest with you, I mean, what are you, are we going to accomplish anything by get, by getting rid of Trump and getting Pence? You know, but he's assassinated during while we're waiting for the election results to come back. Hmm. Huh? Well, what if he? Bring him out here. What do they do? Uh, they've never had to do this, but let's say because he is, he does have comorbidities. Okay, there's no question about it. Um, he is uh, fat and terribly unhealthy. Ugly. Huh? Very ugly. Well, then you don't die of ugliness. But <laughs> uh, but let's just say he has a heart attack towards the end of campaigning because it's a stressful thing and drops dead. Or let's just say Biden does one or the other. Does the yeah. person who's running for vice president suddenly become the presidential candidate? What is what is the rule on that? Because I don't think there is, because the parties nominate the people using their own methodology. I mean, they yeah. could say, we're going to roll dice to figure out who's going to be the nominee, and then they would roll dice, and that would be the rule of that particular party. So what would they do if, if let's good. say, Trump dropped dead or Biden dropped dead before the election? Well, I, I guess we have an answer to that one, don't we? I don't know. I think, that's that's a political question. I don't know. Well, I if, think the if party. Trump is I think so the, president, huh? and then he dies. The vice president becomes president. Right. No, but, but, but while he's running, but, but, they're, but they're running okay. now. You know, so who becomes and the nominee? And it's up to whoever wants to become the next president. It's up to the Democratic Party. It's up to, it's the, up party. to the party. Yeah, they would have to decide who who is going to be yeah. the person running. Well, who do you think the Republicans would run? Whoever was the guy who who was the vice president. Maybe, maybe, president. but they don't have to. Well, I know, but you know, just remember in uh, what was it, nineteen forty six or five or whatever that was, mm -hmm. when uh, Roosevelt died. And that was that he was inaugurated. Yeah, yeah but the vice, office. but then he died. Yeah, but and, that's, but the, then you have a vice president. Right. Yeah. But I I, I'm he, talking about they're running. Okay, you have a candidate. What if yeah. he dies? Who 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 do they get to then pick who it's going to be, or does it go to the person who was chosen to run as vice president? I don't. There's think no so. rule for it to go to the vice give president. A, in either party, there's no rule. Nope. Yeah. I give all of my friends a thank you note for this. What, what, really? Okay. <laughs> Love if Trump dies. I, uh, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't wish anyone dead. Okay. No. But Donald Trump, due to his <laughs> stupidity, and due to his only caring about himself and whether he wins an election or not or whether the economy stays good so his stocks don't tank has killed i would say i'll i'll, I'll put it conservatively at 150,000 people yeah okay 
pure. I think we should have brought him out here and sat him on one of our exploding trees and buried him with our 18-month-old leaves that we have out here. Yeah, right, exactly. We have 18-month-old leaves out here. Did you know that? Really? They last 18 months. The leaves. The leaves. They don't turn to mulch. They don't No, no, no. They, they last for 18 months, and then they explode with the trees. <laughs> oh, <laughs> After the water isn't running through the fucking trees. That's, that's right. Right. So the That's water right. runs through the trees. Yeah, they fall over and then they explode like matchsticks, because of all the leaves that are been there for eighteen months. Yeah. Mm. Did he oh, say this? Wait, wait, hold on a second. Did he really say this? I mean, he I'm, said that. Yeah, he said yes. That. Trees just explode. Yes. He said that the leaves had lay in there for eighteen months, then the trees fall over after they've had water running through them for 18 months. Mm -hmm. They turn into matchsticks and they explode. <laughs> but it's going to get cooler. Don't worry. It's going to get cool. Yeah, it's going to get fucking dark tonight, too. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he's, he's, so he's a fucking exactly. brain surgeon. I'm voting for Trump. <laughs> There's some UFO sighting in New Jersey. I don't know if that's a hoax or what. You ever, so, seen, you, ever seen, you ever seen a truck with the, the sign on the back of the truck that says my lights are on because it's dark? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Charlie man. had his hand raised. Yes, Charlie. Was, yeah, I was just going to point out that the reporter asked Trump, he said, if he, after all of this came out with Bob Woodward, did he have any, did, did he regret having all these, having another super spreader event? He had another rally. And Trump said, no, uh, I'll be okay. Uh, they're all far away. Yeah, which is kind <laughs> of his. They, they, were, they were asking about the people in the crowd, not about yeah, him, but he right. just assumed. No, he says, I don't worry about being on stage because I'm far away from them. Well, wait a minute. If, you're, if that's a consideration, don't you think that maybe it's dangerous to have those people at the rally? Yeah. You know. And then Jared put his foot in Trump's mouth today, too. Who? Jared? Jared, Jared yeah. Kirshner, yeah. Put his foot in Trump's mouth. Basically, yeah. It's the same thing. What did he say? And, uh, he basically, what did he say? Boy, he I'm says, not uh, following the news Trump at all. Doesn't have, Trump doesn't have to follow those things. He wants the people to, to go ahead and make their own decisions. When he was asked, why doesn't he follow the CDC recommendations? Well, because, you know, he wants everybody to kind of follow their own way. Yeah, good idea. Well, you know, you know. You you know, this is not the kind of leadership or the kind of example that we need. You know, you you lead by example. Exactly. And like, and um, hey, there, man, you know, there was nothing. And plus, you know what he said? He said, "Well, I didn't want to scare people." That was his reasoning. To, and then he amplified That's it the other day me. by saying, "I wouldn't yell fire in a crowded theater." And the answer to that one is, yes, you yes, would you, if yes, the theater would. was but, on fire. Oh, fire. Yeah, right, right. And that's right. all you were required to do in this particular case. You know. Can you imagine FDR? Listen, the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Not to worry. Yeah. <laughs> Not to worry. Yeah. We'll leave it to the governors. <laughs> we'll leave it to the governors, yeah. yeah. Here, well, the here. Governor, what, what, if, what if Bush was Hawaii. standing... What if Hawaii's Bush army? They're going. No, these buildings aren't going to fall. It's okay. Oh, by the way, yeah. I know there's a lot of bush bashing going on here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And if you find this disquieting, okay, uh, would you do me a favor and uh, call the program, okay? And if you disagree with us and you're uh, a right winger, and or you know, you really aren't a right winger if you're a trumper, okay? I, I say that only because. I think that a good conservative wouldn't consider Trump a good idea, because yeah. if anything, he's sullying the brand. All right. Yeah. If I was a Republican, uh, I would just be at my wit's end about Donald Trump, because again, he's sullying the brand. Uh, and and so to for me to paint him with this thing about if you're a conservative, call up. But if you're somebody that's pro-Trump, that we're really wrong. Okay, I, we want to hear from you. Okay. Or a COVID, COVID hoaxer. Huh? Yeah. A COVID hoaxer. A COVID hoaxer. No, well, I mean, you know, and, and believe it or not, you'll be treated with very nicely here. Uh, uh, <laughs> unless you treat us like crap, in which case, 
Melly closed the barn, you know. Or, or I mean, QAnon people bring the QAnon people. Yeah, out. I mean, I but if if it, you know if you if you're a pro Trump person, we'd love to hear from you, because the one pro Trump person we had has decided, I guess, not to call this program. I have no idea where he is or what he's doing, but um, uh, and I I like that I like that balance. Uh, I just don't like it to get as annoying as it got, you know. Um, but uh, you know we respect all opinions, and we so if we you feel we're just a, uh, we're just bashing him uh, uh, unquestionably, uh, you're welcome to call. The lines are open, and I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to prevent anybody from coming on who disagrees with us. Yes, Brian. Can we go back to the Japanese bombing Pearl Harbor? Because yes, the Hawaiian army would have to go take care of that under Trump. Yeah. Right, yeah. and they're Democrats, so we're not going to help them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, right. yeah. Oh, right, man. that's the whole. That's the whole thinking well, of him. Right? You, you know, the governors should take care of. When Trump became president, I, I said to Marjorie, you know the story. She woke up in the middle of the night and she said, "Well, who won?" And I said, "Trump." She went, "Oh my God!" And my <laughs> first reaction was, "Look, let's just wait. He might surprise us." You know. He might he surprise us, and he did. Uh, he did. But he might surprise us, and he might do the right thing, okay? Uh, so let's just wait and see. Well, I mean, he didn't, all right? Uh, and I, But I, I was willing to give him that chance and to say that, you know, this democracy somehow seems to survive a lot of onslaughts. So what could he do in four years? Well, the only thing I prayed about him when I said that was, is that with his lack of experience, that he hires the right people to advise him. Mm -hmm. And that if a major tragedy happens or a war breaks out or something where he really has to do his duties as president of the United States mm -hmm. to save American lives, that he'll do it. But he didn't. This was that great test. The COVID thing was the great test. It wasn't China attacking the United States. It wasn't, it wasn't the Russians coming over here and, you know, doing the Americans on us. Uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. It was, a, 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 it was a, a assault. And it wasn't from China, by the way. We're now finding out that COVID may have been here as early as the middle of December. And it only hit him December 1st in China, all right? So, I mean, for him to even infer that this is a China virus is, is absolutely ridiculous. In fact, I was, uh, you know, I was watching these shows about China. And what hit me about it was that, first of all, this guy who was close to Mao and was an American who was charged with running radio, the radio station for the Communist Party for their American service because he was an American. And he got, he got to know Mao to a certain extent and, and a lot of the Communist leaders. And Mao's big desire in the very beginning, and he kept questioning him about this and so on because he was the expert about it being an American, was he wanted to know a lot about America because he said, we want to have good relationship with America. We want to have an ongoing relationship with America. What soured all of that was here in America, we were going through this whole anti-communist thing, right? And so the first time we heard that the country was going communist, like China, oh, that's horrible. We don't want to have anything to do with them. And Nixon, who was then a you know big, big, anti-commie guy uh, uh, made a big deal about it and said, no way are we ever going to do business with these people as long as they're communist. Well, they wanted to be a communist democracy. And we so did them under that they soured on us completely. We, we didn't come to terms with the fact that we could be friends with this nation and have them as, a, as an ally. Because they didn't want they hated the Russians, absolutely hated. He hated Stalin. He didn't say so publicly, but he hated Stalin. And he, he didn't want to have to be subservient to Russia. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be able to do business with the United States, who would then take care of Stalin, you know. Um, it, we missed a big chance there. 
you know, and and what's happening now is this whole notion that because they're communists, the Chinese are bad and they're after us and they're trying to set us asunder and so on, is an old-fashioned, antiquated idea that has no basis in fact. That he, and it seems this is the tone of his entire um, regime, is, if you can follow me on this, is taking old concepts and believing them again. Ones that have long since passed out of existence. And the China he's fighting is not the China that exists today. I end of my little speech. Anybody have anything to say? Well, that's true. And for that matter, you can take it a step further. Um, look historically at how many times isolationism itself became the, the thought of the day and how many times it proved not to work. Mm -hmm. And now you put yourself in 2020 where the world has totally shrunk where information can be passed from here to China in, in you know, nanoseconds. And so more and more, this populist thing that Trump builds talking about America first, well, okay, yeah, I get that. But this notion of isolationism, it's, it never has worked and it will work less now than ever before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it just ties into that fighting yesterday's war, you know. And, and he, he's working with old concepts. Yeah. You know, he's working with old concepts. Uh, he, he really believes that China now is the same China that was around back in the days of Mao, in the days of the Cultural Revolution, which was a dark time for China. And they did a lot of things wrong. But uh, th this is not the, that time now. You know, yes, uh, yes, John. Well, I, I think he's he's bought off by the Russians, and he needs uh, he needs an enemy, and you know he, he the Russians are his you know Putin's his friend now, so he needs to, you know, he, he's substituting China, where where he should be, you know. Well, if you check, China seems to even to this day have no great love for Russia. You no, know, you I don't know. hear about them cooperating on things together and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. You know. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of despicable things about about China, uh, about the way they're treating the you know the uh, who's the, who, the, who are those people up north? The uh, Ugars. The Ugar Ogres, yeah. Ogre, Ogre, yeah. The Ugars. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, there's terrible stuff going on there. But then again, we do terrible stuff to our people and to people yeah. in our country. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Well, Alex, you're the one who went to China. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious, from your perspective, from actually being there, what, what did you feel that, that, that why the countries look, are different? Well, I mean, they're different because uh, culturally, they're different. I mean, they, they, are, they have a different mindset. They also come from different histories. Um, but I find that if you go to Beijing, you would be very surprised that Beijing, outside of the fact that everybody looks Chinese, is not really a terribly Chinese city. It's got big, giant buildings. I mean, bigger buildings than we have here because we don't have the space to put them, but the footprint of some of these buildings are huge. Mm. And the traffic jams at, uh, at, uh, uh, during uh, rush hour are immense. Uh, you know, and then uh, uh, there are, let's see here, I think there are 5,000 to 6,000 Kentucky Fried Chicken franchises in China. I mean, you know, so what's so different about China from the United States? But there is that cultural difference, but, you know, yeah. that, that's, that's, that's a, a minor consideration, believe it or not. Yes, Jeff? Yeah, what, what I always see about China today mm -hmm. is that, that we've really taken away a, a tremendous amount of our manufacturing jobs from the United States and gave it to China. Yeah. Uh, well, we gave it to China, uh, and China ran with it, and it has built a very nice economy for themselves. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's somebody in this documentary um, 
described what happened in China was adhering to market Leninism instead of Marxist Leninism. Uh, that that they now are basically they've shown that you can be capitalist for the uh, economically, but you can be communist politically. Uh, the only thing that they have a problem with, I think, is again, you know, when you get the old guys running the country as opposed to the new guys like we got here, they're working on old tapes, you know, things that they have been taught for years. And their way of running the country is if we don't clamp down and make sure that communism, we, that communism is firmly installed in the country, and if we don't try to smash anybody who tries to change that, we're going to lose it all. Well, you're not going to lose it all if you're doing a job, that, if you're doing something that people want. You know, if the Communist Party is reacting to people and taking care of them and making sure that the tenets of communism, mm -hmm. which is basically, you know, it was, they had Deng Xiaoping in this documentary that I saw, and I, they ran the Mike Wallace interview that I keep referring to, in which Deng Xiaoping was asked by Mike Wallace basically, uh, but I thought you didn't like capitalism. And he says, no, I don't hate capitalism as long as it benefits everybody. Pretty one, right? You know? Uh, and mm -hmm. when somebody once said to him in China, but, you know, capitalism is this enemy of communism, and he said, I don't care if the cat is black or white as long as he can catch a mouse. He said, and that's what we got to do here. You know, we've got to solve this economy problem. We've got to solve, make, make this a country where the economy <clears throat> is vibrant and so on. And if we have to use capitalism as that component, then we do it. And um, uh, in that respect, he was great. Then, of course, we had Tiananmen <laughs> Square, and he killed 1,600 people, or how many people died in Tiananmen Square. Uh, but, you know, uh, it, it, nevertheless, the whole concept was, We'll do capitalism here, but we can still have communism there. And it does work. I mean, you know. But you've got to make sure that whatever you're doing benefits everybody. And the problem they have is they have such a big country that you get out into the, you know, out into the countryside and you've got all these uh, people still working the fields, you know, in the same old way that they did centuries ago. And it's a little hard to say everybody's equal, you know, because mm. there are people in, living in Beijing driving Cadillacs and, you know, Mercedes and uh, uh, having a huge apartments and, you know. So it, 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 it's a hard balance that they've had to come up with, you know. And as to whether they ever will, I don't know. But the, the Communist Party, I think, has to change the way they're doing business. Uh, they have to understand what's going on in Hong Kong, which they totally, it, it's anathema to them. Because it's a bunch of people saying, fuck you to the Communist Party, and they don't want to, they say, well, you can't go fuck you to the Communist Party. Everything else is allowed, but not fuck you to the Communist Party. And that's where they're old fashioned, you know. Uh, but they have gone through times where they allowed people to have complete freedom of speech to see how that would work out. And they closed down on that pretty fast because then the whole Tiananmen Square thing started to happen, which was not over freedom of speech or anything like that. It was over the corruption that was going on within the government because people who had power, who had political power, were being corrupt and, and collecting all kinds of money and things like that. And that's what Tiananmen Square was all about. So, <coughs> you know. Hello, uh, Bree. How are you? Well, I guess. You know, it, what? Uh, we can't hear you, Bree. Your microphone's not on. Your microphone's oh, on. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. <clears throat> it helps. I was coughing and sneezing, yeah. and I didn't want to, you know, have everyone go through that. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing well. I heard you talking about China, so I thought I, you know, should call in. Yeah. Since I spent a good part of my life there. Mm hmm. Where did you live in China? Shanghai. Shanghai. Okay. Yeah, and of course, I've been to Hong Kong more times than I can remember. Yeah. And what did you think? Well, yeah, um, uh, you know, in many ways in Shanghai, 
I found them to be far more capitalistic than us. Um, in other words, this idea of you know working hard and trying to make money in Shanghai, that's, I mean, it's, it's big time. And they were far more tenacious and industrious, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I lived in New York for a while. Um, and I would, I would come down into the city. I took the Metro North train. And mm. <clears throat> the thing that always, you know, I always thought New York was big. And it is, it's big. But then you go to Shanghai and you, you just realize, like, we're not, it's not the same scale. Like, you know, they're, it, they're just, like, huge, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's amazing what you find. And it, it, it flies in the face of anything you expect, you know? And, right. and um, uh, I, um, you know, I... I I find it. I mean, I I certainly could live there, you know, if nothing more for the food. It's nothing. By the way, you asked Jeff, is there anything you didn't expect? I didn't know what I was going to get when I ordered Chinese food in China. But it's not what you get here. I don't think you can find an egg roll in the entire country. Yeah. You know. Tony's on. Be careful what you say. Tony's on. Man. Yeah. I, 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 but I, am I right, uh, Bree? I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, you, you, I went into it. We went into well, a Chinese mm -hmm. restaurant, and all they had was a Chinese menu with pictures on it. So we had to order by picture, and we didn't know what <laughs> we were getting. It was, it was nothing well, like we expected. And it, it's very rare. This, this concept of going to a restaurant and mm -hmm. you order your entree and I order my entree that just doesn't yeah, exist it's not done yeah. that's right yeah see I dealt with a lot of a lot of people from China when I was working and because that was our main shipping destination and they always came over here and they'd naturally hand me the menu and say order for me mm -hmm. you know, that was the kind of thing is that you order for me what what you think I should eat yeah yeah and uh you know I was up in San Francisco all the time so they loved whatever I ordered for them but it was pretty it was you know, and that's all I did was when they come over here, I'd just drive them all over San Francisco up to Coit Tower and they just loved this shit, you know, as I was a tour guide every time they came out here and then they'd go back and they'd send me back gifts and all kinds of crap. <laughs> but you're right, they're very industrious, very you know, they come over here and they wanted to work and you know, you're right. Oh, they, they they've instilled a a, a a um an ethic into the Chinese people that, you yeah. know, you, you work hard and make money. Yeah, exactly. You know? and, yeah. and they would, they would criticize my employees. And, and I got people working with my wife. They're millionaires already, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, yes, Robert. Um, my son has been living in China for the last, well, since January, he lives in, uh, in Guangzhou, which might be, one of the largest cities in the world that nobody knows outside of China. And I would guess that he shares Bree's um, assessment of their industrious and Kevin's, their industrious nature. In fact, my son makes the comment that at times um, he, he kind of remarks that they forget to have fun, you yeah. know, like they're so in tune <clears throat> with, with success and striving and so forth that you hardly see a smile, you know, every once in a while, they yeah. need to be Americanized, like it's okay, you know, to go have a Sunday and, and go play golf or whatever it is. I that, took him to a hockey game and it was like the world. It was like, yeah, the world. Right. he was like, standing wow. up going men's game, men's game. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Uh, I, uh, I found that when I was there, I mean, they just treated us very well. I mean, yeah. they, um, uh, they, they wanted to make sure that we, went away with a great feeling about China. And we, you know, we, we were put up in an apartment for two weeks. We, she only went for three days for her conference, and then the rest of it was they put us up in an apartment. And uh, we, it was like we were living in Beijing. And then we took about two, three days off and went down to um, uh, the, uh, the uh, Lee River down in, uh, I'm trying to remember the town now, uh, but, uh, you know, to see those giant casks, I mean, just beautiful, but it was one of the most memorable vacations I had with mm. the, some of the most pleasant. Yeah, I never went, I well, never went, but they, I know they would have guaranteed me, you know, 
limo rides everywhere and the whole bit. Yeah, I mean, been, they just, been first class. oh, they gave us somebody to go around as our translator and our guide. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, she was answering all our questions, including the ones I did about politics. I said, you know, are you a communist? She says, uh, no. I said, well, how do you feel that, you know, you, you can't vote, you know, because we vote in America and we hold that to be a big deal. And she said, well, I can vote if I want to become a member of the Communist Party. And she said, but I don't want to become a member of the Communist Party. Yeah. Find, find the way I am. And she says, I don't care about politics. She says, let them play their games. Let them do what they want to do. As long as I do okay, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, All he wanted to do exactly. was come over here and go to the Levi's store and stuff his, see what his stuff is. A suitcase full of Levi's and go yeah. back there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if they go to the. Oh, I'm sorry. If my son were on the panel, the other thing he would probably want to point out is that there's a distinct reason why they handled the COVID crisis better than we did. My son says, I'm as American as, you know, the day is long. But in the case like a COVID crisis, the authoritarian nature of their government made oh, things street, yeah. easier. You know, it really did because the government said, okay, this is what you're going to do and mm -hmm. shut your fucking mouth and get it done. Yeah. And everybody had the app put on their phone so that they could be traced in case they got sick. Everywhere yeah. you went, you saw nothing but masks. And so he said, you know, I, I'm not one that's going to say I love authoritarian government, but in a case there like are this. moments such as this when it is to their advantage. Took care of mm -hmm. shit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, John. Yeah, I, I think we could have done that here, you know, if if Trump or whoever, you know, just just said, look, you know, we've got to buckle down and this is the way it's got to be. You know, and all these crazy people saying, oh, I ain't wearing a mask. Then you, you should have said, look, if you don't wear a mask, you're going to get fined, you know, $5,000 fines, you know. Um, we have a fine. Know. We have a fine here in New York in the subways that if you don't have a mask on, you get fined $50. You know, should be more. It should be like a thousand. Well, I don't, I don't think they, they could do that here because, you know, you got people that yeah. don't wear seat belts. You got people that use a commute lane, and it's still five hundred bucks. You drive down the commute lane, and they still do it. They don't care. You can drive. They get tickets. Yeah. yeah, they get tickets. But I know people that'll take the ticket because they get home if fast. If we had a president that was serious and he and he just said, "Look, you know, this is serious." But, 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 it's, you're, 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 that's the, the, that's the big if here. We have a president, we have a bit, that's the big if here. We have a president who didn't yeah. do a goddamn thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's still no plan. There's still no plan. Right. No. It, yeah, it, yeah. It's always been you, well, the states handle it, states handle it. States well, there's, handle no, it. there's no well, national that's plan. That's ridiculous. We have a plan here in New York, and we've been been very good at it. We took, we took a very bad situation, and we bent the curve and turned it downward. Uh, we seem to be having a, a little uptick maybe happening, and we're worried about that. Uh, but I'm sure that our governor will ratchet it down. But what he did is he went on the air every single day, and he gave a press conference. And in that press conference, he gave a pep talk. And the pep talk was the only way we're going to turn this thing around is if we all wear masks, we all do our part, we're New Yorkers, and he had this whole mantra he did where we're New York tough, we're New York smart, uh, we're New York uh, loving. Uh, and he gave us a lecture every day and literally talked us into bending the curve and, and showed what a leader does when it's time for a leader to do something. Uh, he made a few the mistakes. Is you're not in isolation. Huh? And so it can come back. It can come back there every day. I'm sure it's coming from other places. They're, they're already there. starting to screw with that, Alex, out there in in New York. I mean, the schools are starting to screw with it. They're starting to go. They had to break up stuff in the parks out there and everything else. Those last few weeks. Well, it's that crazy. the problem is that the people are starting to get a little too lax now. Yeah. And exactly. and what it's going to do is that he's going to have to clamp down. He's going to have to close down the restaurants again. He's going to have yeah. to even stop outdoor dining. He's going to have to stop a lot of things. And then everybody's going to yell and scream, and he's going to have to say, listen, you didn't do your job. 
you know, you've got lazy. And, and that's what I was worried about because as I go out now, I go out with the intent of things are a little better so it's safer out there. But I found lately I don't feel as safe when I look around me and people are not wearing the mask. You know, well, this did you hear about the boneheads in Ohio? No. The kids in Ohio that were having the, the parties? They interviewed, I, I saw it on CNN just before we talked on Friday and I didn't get it out. But Was this the get, 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 get COVID parties? Yeah, the COVID parties. The guy had COVID and he was having a party. And then he's, the, the cops are interviewing this guy that had the party. And he says, uh, yeah, well, I, I got COVID. I just, I got it, uh, my test done last week and I was positive. He goes, well, why are you having a party? He goes, well, because a bunch of other people have it. Yeah. And they were at the party too. And it, well, where are they? Oh, well, they left a while ago. There's some that are still here and some left. Well, where'd they go? I don't know. They went downtown. Some went to another party. So, so it's just spreading like that. Yeah. And people people are not understanding, stuff. you know, it's like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to wear a mask. I don't want, what? You know, they come weren't wearing on. a mask and they were smoking pot. He even said that. They were all smoking yeah. pot. This is what we get for living in such a goddamn selfish nation. Exactly. I mean, the people in this country are really selfish. Oh, I have the right oh, not, I have the constitutional right not to wear a mask. Let me see, which amendment was that again? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, or I'm just, I'm young and it doesn't bother me. I'm not sick, so well, it doesn't matter. Well, somewhere, you know, in the preamble to the Constitution, it says life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, when you don't wear a mask, life is not a possibility for me, which closely follows me not having the pursuit of happiness or anything else, let alone being above ground. I mean, it's just, it's just, why can't we say, hey, we all live in this place together. Let's all do something for each other, you know? Who's the most selfish? Drunk driving. What? I always come back to it. I always come back yeah. to drunk driving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well... I mean, so, so I got this app called Citizen, and it tells you when there's crimes going around, mm -hmm. like in your neighborhood. Yeah. It says here, a report or a report of person armed with machete <laughs> outside oh my. my apartment. Oh, very <laughs> good. Oh, come on. That would be common. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to some visuals. Uh, that would be common here. Well, I, all the selfishness, true. all the selfishness goes back to true. Trump. You know, I, it, 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 well, he not. has created a selfish atmosphere. There's no question about it. Oh, yeah. You know, um, again, a leader of a country like Trump, uh, a leader's job is to set the example and to protect the people. Those are his two jobs. And you set the example by just doing it. And all he had to do was say, hey, everybody, looks like this is not a good deal that's going on here. Good way to prevent it is everybody should wear a mask and go on the air and give a pep talk every day about wearing a mask and and social distancing and uh, you know doing this and washing your hands. But no, he that, didn't do any him. of that. Did not. That's not do him. Any of that. That's not who we have though. And it would have so helped him times. politically. Yeah, Did exactly. You hear about that goober that he put in charge of uh, communications at the CDC? Mm -hmm. To, to cover up everything. I mean, yeah. God, that, that dude's got no, no experience you know, at all. He's, if you think about it, though, yeah. the Trump can really politicize anything, and he can sort of PR spin anything away, except for a virus and a major health pandemic. I mean, he's still trying, and a lot of people are still buying it. But with so many people dying, and there's no end in sight, it really exposes the flaws in his his thinking of, of what leadership is and how to lead. Well, who, 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 who was the uh, who, who was the black uh, guy that died? It was his uh, ran against him for president. Herman Cain. Herman Cain. Uh, uh, what? Herman Cain. Herman Cain. Yeah. You going to tell me that he isn't responsible for the death of Herman Cain? Yeah. Plain and simple, he's the, he's responsible for the death of the man. Yeah. The man went to the went to the uh, Oklahoma City gathering. Perfectly didn't helped. wear a mask because he didn't want to offend Trump, because Trump wasn't wearing one by example, and he uh, he got COVID and he died. Um, and you see, Trump is still going. He's still holding his rally. He has no I, shame. I, I I just I I can't fathom that except to say he's probably going to win, 
And this shows the, so many flaws in, in not only our political system, but our civil system. We can't, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it this way. Hey, did, did anybody see this movie called The Social Dilemma on Netflix? No, I've been wanting to watch uh, it. Yeah. Check it out. It's really good. It's a great movie. It's fucking scary, man. It is. Well, in, It'll what, make you in, what, in what respect? Huh? In what respect is it scary? Um, it's it's just about how social media has, uh, you know, has has just literally brainwashed the whole country, and it's brainwashing everybody. And uh, you know, it goes into politics, and you know how how you know how fucked up our politics is because of it. Yeah. You know? it's, yeah. It, it's it's a it's a good movie, and then watch Cuties, the uh, pedophile movie. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that it's the one that uh, what's his, uh, the, your guy down in Texas. Uh, who, who's your yeah. who's your senator in Texas? Cruz. 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 Uh, Ted yeah. Cruz. Uh, it's actually a good movie. I mean, it, it, he says I I want the uh, the Justice Department to check into whether this isn't kitty porn. Yeah. Well, to begin with, there's no sex in it, so it can't possibly be kitty oh. porn. But it's about. It, it, yeah, but I went and took I went and took a look at it as a result. So he did a wonderful promotional job for them. Yeah. 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 Right. I, 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 it looks boring to me. Was it any? Was it interesting? Yeah. At, was it interesting at all? Yeah. I mean, it's if about, you're. It, it's if, about what happens to little girls when they get, you know, when they get on the internet and they start watching the shit that they're seeing nowadays. That's just in our culture. And they it's get only natural, and they get thrown know? into adulthood early, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they're watching Neil like Postman at NYU RGB wrote a book about that shit. Yeah. years and well, years ago called The Disappearance of Child. And now I got to turn down the volume. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're uh, we're we're, uh, you know, I mean, I was thinking about it tonight, and I went, you know, I I, I love I have science fiction, and I've watched science fiction all my life, and. Of course, some of the best science fiction is the apocalyptic science fiction where something happens in the world and all of a sudden I feel I'm living this movie, you know? I mean, what? what? You know? Right, Charlie? You're nodding your head yes. Yeah, that's where we are. We're in the middle of this apocalyptic science fiction movie. In which the end yeah. of it is that the half the world loses the population and the other half are like uh, animals foraging for food. Uh, you know, but on one end we've got we've got hurricanes and uh, uh, forest fires and, and, and ravaging ravaging forest fires. Not just forest fires. Forest fires are a fact of nature. But ravaging forest fires caused by the denial of the science of global warming. Because if yeah. this isn't a good example of what global warming does, nothing is. Okay? Yes, Tony? But the thing is, is it doesn't need you to believe in yeah. it. Tony? Right. right. Yeah, you know, you were saying it reminds you of a science fiction, like, you know what this is reminding me of? The, the novel If by you the say Scooby-Doo, I'm going to kill you. No, no, actually... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the novel by Stephen King, The Stand. Uh, the Stand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I Almost mean, like the apocalyptic vision of the future where the virus is loose, it's airborne. But, it's good for but this is no movie. Yeah, well, well, this is like, no it's, movie. It's, it's, you know. And you guys yeah. aren't in California. It's even movie. worse in California because we had the heats, and today's yeah. the first day that we saw the sun's like outside. <laughs> Do you know your f smoke from your forest fires hit Manhattan today? Yep. Yeah. They were saying it was up in the upper atmosphere. Like, yeah, it was in the upper atmosphere, and the sun burn. was a little, little bright. Slow burn to the end I mean, of the a lot, you guys. <laughs> if you want to rate. What, what, tried to rake, yes. What, tried to rake. Tony, Tony, what are you trying to say? <laughs> no, uh, the other thing was the brush fires. They never mentioned the brush fires, and I said, oh, well, we got to start watering the mountains now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Put sprinklers on, on out Sprinkler the system. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let, let Tony, Tony guys. was trying to say something. Yeah, you know what scared me? What I was going to ask you guys out in California, mm -hmm. are you scared with the air? I mean, I'm wondering how toxic that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah it I'm sucks. Not... we got to wear masks for the air now. Yeah. yeah. That's not made for that air, so anyway, so with all these things happening, um, the, the denial of science seems to be the most dangerous thing that's happening right now. Uh, and uh, t 
to that extent, for the first time in, I think, is 125 years of history, Scientific American oh, yeah. has endorsed a presidential candidate. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And they endorsed, of course, Joe Biden. And they said, we have to do it because of Trump's absolute denial of science. Yeah. And that that we, we need a president who is going to look at all of the science and come to some kind of conclusion that isn't just, you know, complete balderdash. And it's, you know what I would say to Trump, Alex? He denies science, whatever it is, because I think it's bullshit with him. He said, Trump, when you get sick or if you get cancer, just drink some herbal tea. Yeah. Go to the doctor. Don't well, do anything. Look, this. Tony, Tony, let, let, let's be very honest about it. I think the best question that, that uh, what's his name, uh, uh, asked him, uh, Woodward. Woodward asked him, yeah. was, do you feel that you grew up with white privilege, that you grew mm -hmm. up white and in the, basically with this white frame of reference and that you don't understand anything else? And his reply was, oh, you drank the Kool-Aid or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But that was maybe the best question because that's exactly what's going on. This is a guy who is stupid by his own upbringing and yep. his own environment. Uh, you know, he doesn't know from these kind of things. He doesn't know but, from science or global warming or any of this stuff. He did, but in a way, yeah. in a way, Alex, uh, it might get so bad that science can't rescue us. So, in other yeah. words, we, we may end up in a place where it's just <laughs> like, you know, kiss the rosary beads because we're yeah. goners. That's the danger. Uh, it, it's getting that bad. And yes. the sad thing is, after they stopped everything... In the middle of March, remember India and all these places, all these cities cleared up, all the air. Mm -hmm. Venice, all the, the the water got clear and they had dolphins going through Venice and stuff like that. And so quickly can we flip that switch again? It's going to go back to that. I'm, I'm waiting for the moment that we have this, this uh, moment from uh, 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 the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in which all the dolphins decide to leave the Earth. <laughs> because it's about to come to an so end. So long and thanks for and th all the fish. So long and thanks for all the fish. Right. Uh, uh, it's just getting to that point where I see the dolphins just saying, that's it, see you later. You know, yes. we tried. We tried to warn you. You know, but you wouldn't listen to us, so we're out of here. Good luck. You know. Um, it is amazing, I think, uh, for, for the most part. Uh, that, that any of this is, is going on right now. And then, you you know, it's hurricanes, it's, it's the fires, it's the denial of science and COVID. And uh, is there, what else? Is, are there any other factors? And that has caused, that has caused a rise in criminality. Mm -hmm. You know, I told Marjorie last uh, March, I said, if we're indoors much longer, the day people finally get to go outdoors, we're going to start seeing crime on the rise. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Because everybody just went crazy, you know. Um, well, I, I thought that in the first few days of the pandemic or the first weeks or so, I thought, you know, I, I'm wondering how, how long the billionaires are going to take to figure out that if everything goes south, they're not going to be able to spend any of that money they've all got cooped up. You know, it, I always like to say, whether you liked Bernie Sanders or not, and, and actually, you know, or AOC, a lot of those plans are going to have to come to fruition because you can't, you just can't have this, it can't sustain. You can't have well, people you, that you, have you, $50 billion. You know, we've had and everybody else a lot of people on a have gotten, day. a lot of people have gotten very wealthy off this uh, pandemic. Uh, Amazon. Is a good example of a company yeah. that has just made a fortune off the pandemic. Uh, Netflix is another company. Apple uh, has sold more computers lately and more uh, communication devices than they've sold in the past. These are companies that, because they didn't have stores or whatever, it looked like they would be hurting. They weren't hurting at all. And I think they've had a windfall. And I think they should share it with the American public. I think they should give a, a good deal of it back in the form of services and things that they do for the country. Not a little thing here or a little thing there like Amazon doing an ad on TV saying, 
oh, we have electric cars delivering our packages, you know. No, n none of that bullshit. I mean literally giving back, giving huge amounts of money to hospitals and, and to governments to take care of this COVID crisis because they benefited the most from it. Am I wrong? Is there something wrong with me saying that um, as good no, citizens they should be doing that? Then. What? In Germany, they're, they're starting universal basic income in Germany. They're you know, starting the experiments. And I, I just don't know how, how we get by. There's so many people who are going to be unemployed, out of work, uh, and there's no plan. There's evicted. no plan. Evicted. How about evictions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Already getting evicted. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, all I'm saying is I'm, you know, uh, I, I, I don't, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a very much a heavy socialist, but I don't think that we should force these people to do something, but out of the goodness of their hearts, they should be, you know, they should say America needs our help now. And we've had a windfall profit as a result of this, and we should give some of it back. Am I wrong? I agree. I agree. Yeah. It should be a wealth tax, you know? I don't I don't think we should have to put a tax on it. I don't I, I think I would just like it if people would do what's right. You know? I mean I'm sick of people not doing what's right. So Yeah. You know. What do you think, Kevin? Am I full of crap? Nope. Oh, okay. Because I always right. go to you because I know you'll tell me when I'm full of crap. Well maybe not. No, I agree. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, uh, Robert. I'd, I'd like to take this in a slightly different direction. I think long before there was a Trump, I think one of the things that was happening in our two things are happening in our country that weren't getting talked enough, talked about enough. They were getting mentioned. One is the complete obliteration of the middle class. Mm -hmm. It's now simply more and more each day a country of haves and have nots. And second, this in turn has led to a denigration of those who have expertise, who have scientific knowledge and abilities, who can educate. Education has been suddenly uh, denigrated, where if you have a degree, you're suddenly looked upon with scorn by many people in the country. Um, if you're a doctor, if you're a, if you're someone that's learned immediately you're 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 criticized and ostracized ah well he thinks he knows blah blah and blah and i think in my heart it, a lot of it comes down to the fact that the middle class is gone look my father was a blue collar employee he was mm -hmm. a printer he had two children we lived in a lower middle class situation yet for the money he made, we owned a car and we went on vacation every single year. And yet now there are people wearing white collars with one kid who can afford to do none of those things. Yep. The middle well, class you know, has gone away. You know, I feel that, you know, you were class. talking about, uh, what was it, Germany has this minimum wage that you, they just give you the money a certain well, it's an experiment they're trying. Fin a couple of countries have tried it. I think Finland tried it, mm -hmm. and uh, and some others. So we're getting some we're getting some data. Well, back. here here's my here's, here's my feeling about it. Nobody in this country should probably be making under thirty five thousand dollars a year. Period. That's it. And if you don't make it, the government pays up pays the difference, because everybody should have a decent life. And I agree with Deng Xiaoping in that one statement, and that is, I believe in capitalism as long as it benefits everybody, as long as every American lives a decent life. And yeah, some people maybe don't want to work. Okay, we don't have enough jobs anyway. Be our guest, okay? You know, we'll pay you not to work. I mean, don't we pay farmers not to grow crops? Yeah. You know, use that same theory. I mean... It's, it's time we started saying everybody should benefit from capitalism, not just a few, not the people who own stocks or the Donald Trumps of the world, or even the Warren Buffetts, who at least he's a decent guy, you know. And whoever thought that Bill Gates would wind up being a decent guy, but he's turned out to be, you know. So, 
I don't know. Just call me an old red. Okay, I was a di red diaper baby, so. Yeah, I say. Do you know the expression, Robert? Have you heard red diaper baby? Yes. Yeah. Your, your hat gives you away, by the way. Oh, yeah. listen, I, you know, I love this hat. <laughs> it so simply said, makes a statement, you know, more than make America great again, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not a communist. That's for damn sure. I don't believe in communism. I think it's too dogmatic a system. Yes. Yeah, you know, um, when my my mother bought a house in Sunnyvale in '65 mm -hmm. for sixteen thousand dollars, just yeah. a little ranch house, you know, across the street of a from the school that I went to. Yeah. And um, she she was able to buy that house working as a waitress in a Lions or in Denny's, that kind yeah. of job. Yeah. After coffee shop wages, that house today. Well, she doesn't know. Well, she's passed away a long time ago, but she sold it in 1980. But that house today is worth 1.7 million. You know, <laughs> you can't buy a house working in a fucking, you know, Denny's in did, Silicon did she, Valley. Did she ever sell it? Yeah, she sold it in 1980. And what did she sell it for? For about 180,000. Oh boy, too bad she didn't hold on to it. Yeah, like, I know. Okay. Like in that area, though, you have a lot of Asian, you have a lot of Indian, and the schools are now top schools over there. So trying to get that real estate over there is because of that. You go back to the Chinese, right? We lived, we, uh, before Tiffany and I were dating, she lived across the street from a junior high school. And I would look on Saturday mornings, and I would see Sounds all like the kids, yeah. and the kids are going there to school on Saturdays, all, all Chinese. And one guy from work, his kid actually goes there. And that's all they do. Like you guys are saying about no golfing or anything like that. That's all they do is they go to school. And then they wonder why all these Asian and like Indian are challenging for jobs and all this stuff. And nowadays it's because we're sitting there playing soccer on Saturday mornings with our kids right. instead of having them bust their ass while they're young. Get all yeah. that shit over with. You know? And they pay cash for those houses. They well, walk over and they pay cash. My mother, yeah, my, yeah. we, we yeah. had a house in Marin County. Mother-in-law's in Cupertino. We had a oh, we, yeah. we, same, we, we had a, we had a house. My mother had my parents had a house in Marin County. When my father died, she wanted to sell it, and move into the city, and I said, "Keep it." And she said, "Well, I can't afford it. its payments, you know, and stuff." And the payments were really cheap. It was like 125 bucks a month, something like that. I said, "I'll pay it. Just keep it." And she said, "Nam, your uncle tells told me I should sell it." And, and she got, she got what she considered a good price. They bought the thing for ninety nine thousand dollars or something, and they sold it for. She sold it for about two hundred thousand. She thought she had made a lot of money. There was a big boom in real wow. estate in Marin County about two years after that. That thing suddenly was worth over a million dollars. Yeah. Wow. So it's too bad that happened to your mother because I know, I know, I know. Well, we had the I, reverse. My yeah. mom had a we had a lake house in Ohio. Yeah. And uh, she didn't want to keep paying the taxes and all the utilities because people would only go up there twice, three times a year. Yeah. And uh, we did. She wasn't able to sell it for what it was going for three or four years prior to that. Mm -hmm. She had to come down a lot. So yeah. it depends on the market. Well, the worth of my uh, wife's uh, apartment here in New York that she owns is not what it was. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's lost a bit of worth because. Prices are going down rapidly in New York City as people are leaving. And you really? want you want an off, some office space? Oh, oh please. They're, they're all over the place, you know. So. In San Francisco, wow. everything. There's just open open offices and retail spots yeah. everywhere. Yeah. This whole economy is going to. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of, we've ran out of, run out of time. What a nice discussion we've had tonight. Yeah. Wow, Bob. What a civil, decent discussion. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you very much, Brian. We appreciate it. Is she she sleeping? I think so. <laughs> uh, 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 Jeff, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Charlie, we love having you on this program. Robert, you're a mainstay. John, so are you now. You've been around for so long. Uh, Kevin, always, always when I see your shining beard, I get a smile on my face and um, 
Tony, thank you, and thanks to Bree from uh, Kuala Lumpur this evening. If all of you will give a big wave goodbye, I'll give you a wave goodbye back. There we go. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be another one assembling immediately after I'm through here with Jack Bishop and the intersection. Yes, it's called that for a reason. I don't know what the reason is, but it's called that for a reason. Anyway, uh, that'll be next over most of the same cabinet. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. I mean, really, really safe. We need to keep safe. And uh, wear a mask, please. Bye, everybody. Thank you.